thing for our friends and allies and our adversaries to understand. Trump was an aberration. He represented only Donald Trump. He did not represent a tendency in American foreign policy or politics, and I think increasingly we will see that. Now, let me ask you, uh, we've learned that under President Trump, the Department of Justice subpoenaed Apple uh, for data from Trump's uh, White House counsel, Don McGahn, uh, and his wife. Uh, pretty startling revelation coming this afternoon. We don't know the motivation, but this DOJ move also happened around the time that Trump was unhappy with McGahn uh, about the Mueller investigation. What's your view on this? Yeah, well, I haven't gotten any calls from Apple yet, uh, so I'm, I'm still waiting to see. But uh, I, I think uh, I'm certainly prepared to believe the worst, that uh, Trump used the Justice Department for his own political purposes. I've experienced that myself. Uh, I definitely think we need to get to the bottom of it. I would say, though, that a circus on Capitol Hill uh, in committee hearings that are more political theater than, than real efforts to get the bond of this are not a good idea at this point. I think the department's uh, inspector general, who has a reputation for real independence, has been asked to look at it. I hope he'll do it. I hope he'll do it quickly. Let me ask you, though, what would your reaction be if you were to get that call from that? I <laughs> wouldn't be the least surprised. But it is, do you view that as an invasion of your privacy or of, of the privacy of, say, for example, these members of Congress? You know all too well. You're, you're certainly not in the same camp ideologically as Eric Schwal and Adam Schiff, but to have a Justice Department under one administration uh, investigating and subpoenaing records uh, for critics up on Capitol Hill. But as I say, I, look, I, think of that? I'm prepared to believe the worst. I think we're operating in a... In a what, does that, what does that mean, the worst? The, the worst that, that Trump would attempt to do things for political purposes and, and subvert the course of justice, but we're still operating in a large fact vacuum here. Uh, and I think until we get more, it'd be better and more prudent looking ahead uh, to try and wait for that IG investigation. And, and just to butt that up, how high does the bar have to be, do you think, to investigate members of Congress who have been with critics? Well, look, in that, in that fashion. Yeah. look I, I, I was uh, an assistant attorney general in the Department of Justice uh, under Ronald Reagan. Uh, uh, I was head of the civil division. Everybody in the Department of Justice understands that when you begin to look at something members of Congress does, it's a very, very serious issue. There are speech and debate clause issues, there are separation of powers issues, uh, and and uh, and certainly the norm at that time was nothing like that was, was done without uh, extraordinarily good reason and with high level authority. We don't know at this point uh, if those hurdles were met. We have denials of knowledge by uh, Barr and uh, Rod Rosenstein, Jeff Sessions, I, th I think, was refused if they were Russia-related. So the, the obvious people that uh, everybody now wants to subpoena in Congress say they don't know anything about. I, it's just an example of how little we really know at this point. And very quickly, Netanyahu out as Prime Minister. Uh, is this a challenge? Is this an opportunity? What is this for the Biden White House to have Nathalie Bennett from the Minister of Prime Minister? Well, I think it's, it's going to be hard for uh, the administration. I think it's also going to be hard in Israel. This coalition, of which won very narrowly, is bound together by a profound unity on getting rid of Bibi Netanyahu. Okay, so now they've accomplished that. Although I would say Netanyahu is out, but not down. Uh, we're going to see more of him. So the coalition is going to confront a number of very serious challenges, not least of which is if the U.S. goes back into the Iran nuclear deal. The two key leaders, Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid of a center-left party, have very different views about how to act. And, uh, so it's kind of the, the hard drive to keep Israel with this diverse coalition trying to work together. Yeah, and that, yeah, it may not be totally out of this. Uh, de definitely not. Uh, John Bolton, uh, former ambassador, former national security advisor, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to check out Bolton's book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Again, and coming up a royal uh, welcome. All the pomp and circumstance surrounding President Biden's visit to see Queen Elizabeth at Windsor Castle. Did you know over one in four Americans over the age of 40 could develop an irregular heartbeat? That's over 40 million adults who need to pay extra attention to their heart. 